Leave me alone! Rain Run. I think this is the perfect way to describe this damn song, and even anime. But if you've been living under a rock, the first two measures of the opening for the anime My Dear Nokotan flooded all of the feeds, all of the poor ears, and all of the innocent brains that do not deserve this repetitive of hell known as Chikanokonokonokokoshtantan. Whoever made the song deserves to go to prison, I mean needs to go to the Hall of Fame. Why you may ask? Well, in this video, we shall break down the composition genius of Sika Iro days and even answer the lingering question. Why is it stuck in my head? Did you save our brains? Starting off, we have the Oso oh family intro section which by the way has garnered more than 5 million views what on his first one hour endurance version on youtube and 12 million views on tiktok huh we'll discuss why this part blew up later on but this intro is both subtle and incredibly catchy the lyrics are basically a repetition of the title of the anime if you were to sing it in english it would be my dear friend nokaton my dear friend nokaton my dear friend nokaton yeah it doesn't feel the same as the original in the meme version we only get to hear the same tone and energy of the vocal on a constant loop but with the full song we see that one of the singers is gradually increasing the energy before the main intro kicks in but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The drums in this section are simplistic and goopy. The percussion elements include claps, kicks, and a ca oh, well. and hi hats. Also, the rhythm is based on ska, a genre known for its kick drums on twos and fours of the kick drum. And why this particular rhythm? Well, the composer Waga said because it sounds similar to the Japanese word for deer. Shika, shika. Chica. Alongside the meme-worthy drums, the guitar supports with subtle yet funky palm mutes, adding more to the overall catchiness of the meme intro. But did you know, there was a chance this could have been the entire song? Yeah. Music director Fukumori thought the intro section was so good on its own that he considered making the entire song just this part. However, since it was an anime opening, it still needed a catchy and memorable chorus. We were so close to greatness! We are then greeted with a powerful and explosive intro, accompanied by energetic trumpets and other brass instruments, featuring a goofy and repetitive chord progression. The drum beat establishes this group for the bass, piano, guitar, and brass instruments to follow. The verse then enters the stage with the vibes and bars. Literally. As the verse is basically rap, which is a tapeat! God, you can never go wrong with rap, and boy oh boy, they cook the verses. The rapping is stellar and very groovy. I also love the detail where the backing vocals join in only on certain words and phrases, creating a chant like effect. But what the ghost rapping? Well, before that, I must mention the pure genius of the songwriting. The verses actually only consist of four characters all the way. Composer Raga wanted the verses to have sentences based on these characters only, and the and result, I might say, is both catchy, fun, and even hilarious. The meaning behind them seems to describe one of the protagonists, the wall-breaking Dory, I mean Antlers Nokotan. They seem to describe her characteristics from a third-person perspective. Verse 2 then spits some actual facts about deers. Who knew that this meme of a song can actually teach you about Nichika, I mean about deers? But we gotta praise the amazing vocal performances from just this very section. The voice actresses really gave their all in this section and it's a blast to listen all throughout. Someone also meowed none. But that's just the vocals because damn, they also cook with the instrument. Especially the birds. Oh my god, I am so tempted to bust out my Betsy and learn just the verse section on the bass because man, that repetitive bass setting is so groovy and funky. But other than that, there's also the inclusion of claps and special effects, which by the way also consists of animal noises. Waka challenged the audience to find three hidden easter eggs, which are in fact three different deer noises. Reddit users might have already identified them at specific timestamps in the song. But let me know after liking and subscribing in the comments down below if you think that they are right or if you have other timestamps on where these three deer noises could possibly be. The rest of the band adds to their feeling and vibe of the song. I love the staccato chords of the piano and the lead guitar copying the bass line. But man, the stars are definitely the brass instruments. They just add to the feel of the song and blend both a nostalgic and modern touch. I do have to commend Raphael's remix as that also features brass instruments. I guess great minds think alike. Then we enter the first pre-chorus, where the melody of the first line is delightfully cute. The bass turning in adds a sense of calm after the fiery verse, and the piano adds a touch of charm to this brief, endearing moment. But then the chords ascend and build up with the lyrics asking the listener to join with this chaos screaming and chanting nom, 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 nom. which by the way is a dear sound we heard it at the very beginning of the song and there's a classic one two three as the instruments fills and builds up to the main chorus and man they did not disappoint with this lit chorus it's extremely catchy with both the vocal melody and the instruments standing out the chords repeat the main intro while the melody is playful featuring fast notes and moving through the scale you can tell that each instrument is having fun and going all out the piano adds a playful touch while the trumpets provide a rich backdrop to my ears the bass and guitar are the main stars really capturing the groove and vibe of this song while not hesitating to fill out the sound but do you know the lyrics of this chorus contains my favorite 
type of humor, which is self-inflicting. The lyrics are 100% aware of the fact that this song, and mainly the anime, is weird, crazy, and downright insane. I mean, what the- They are aware of how experimental they are by nature, but do not ashamed of it one bit. With descriptions on how a deer eats, the song wants the listener to gradually chew down the insanity, get numb to the absurdity, and succumb to the powerful free-for-all chaos of the deer. Damn, are they starting a cult? Then the song transitions into an awesome and gooey post-chorus section, where it changes both its tone and pace. This adds dynamics to the song before we transition back to the verses. I also have to commend the voice actresses. Their voices are really cute and soothing. They definitely chose the right people, both for voicing and singing in this anime. The lyrics, by the way, related the journey between Koshitan and Okatan on how to await coincidence. I mean, hanging in electric pole is insane, bro. They met and became close friends as if they were destined by fate, not as destined as Bochi with. Um. Let the audience decide. I can't really describe it, but man, the vibe of this post chorus is an absolute W and I love every bit of it. We move over to the refrain, which is just a repeat of the Brain Rot, where they utter the title of the anime yet again. We return to the peak rapping of our voice cast. Once again, they gave their all in this section, to the point of even actually doing some sick voice acting, which is at the peak. Well, not as peak as we will find out later on. In these verses, however, it seems to involve a conversation with either Nokotan and Koshitan, or uncle with Nokotan, as the lyrics are very conversational and have consistent back and forths. Later on, they describe the events of the anime involving a freaking deer club, and even inviting their target demographic, which are young Japanese high school girls, to join this peak club. Besides the lyrics and vocals, the bass, after repeating its goofy lines, starts adding variation and making the track more dynamic. The claps also vary but retain their catchiness, while the sound effects continue to enhance the atmosphere of this chaos. I should also mention how the brass instruments enter. The unique sound adds a chromatic vibe, reinforcing the idea that this show and song don't take themselves too seriously. Overall, it's a slight variation from the first verses but still a delight to hear. We then proceed to the second pre-chorus, where it varies. Instead of the first one only entering with one verse, they enter with all of the voice cast. The lyrics are a proclamation of this deer moment where they believe that the sounds of the deer will be heard not just in all of the earth but even to the cosmos. This joke never gets old. Like the first one, it builds up but instead of entering the course, we are greeted with a fun, goofy, instrumental section that makes you want to dance. Yeah, this section is just dance material. All the layers and instruments make it so groovy. We have the staccato chords of the guitar, the supportive yet funky rhythmic elements, the brass instruments making fun melodies. But damn, my favorite is the chord playing of the piano. It's rather simplistic in hindsight, but boy, is it fun and groovy. Wait, wrong anime. The instruments continue to sway your hips to the cosmos before we proceed to the weirdest and most peak bridge of all time. It opens rather calmly, maintaining the same energy as the verses. There are scattered sound effects in all directions, and the claps are accompanied by a killer bass lick. Then it explodes with energy, featuring a repetitive arpeggio background played by the guitar, piano, and various other instruments. The bass and drums elevate the energy even further. Then the vocals have a back and forth chanting out the message of them once again breaking the fourth wall. This show loves to do that, by the way. And weirdly vocal that they are the messengers of God and that deer should be worshipped. Then I can't help but laugh because someone actually screamed there while the vocals post faces that this is just youth and if they are too bright for you then you should get sunglasses. Not as bright as Kita though. This vocal nonsense happens while the instruments build up and become more chaotic by the beat until, until it suddenly calms down, featuring only the main vocal and the piano. There's also the arrival of gospel keys, which is just a nice touch. The symbols sprinkle here and there, but it's a calm reflection the atmosphere after the insanity of the bridge, but it gradually builds up again to bring us back to the energy reflecting the final chorus. The final chorus by the way is a repeat of the first, but there are some slight variations to wrap this song up nicely. The lyrics are the same, so we shall not discuss that again. We then close the song with a repeat of the post chorus from earlier. It follows the same chords and vibe, but the lyrics seem to be a rebuttal between Koshitan and Nokotan, where Nokotan advocates for humans to be there. Oh god, no. And Koshi obviously opposing that idea. Other than this variation, the lines are a repeat of the first, but it ends with a classic approach. They end with the classic triple line apart the beat, where the melody and chords repeat for two more times. Then it abruptly ends, closing this utter chaos dramatically. But we still haven't answered the most pressing question. Why is it so damn catchy? Well, there's some science behind it. In an interview with Muse Box, music director Fukumori reached out to his music engineer friend to investigate why the one hour loop of this song was very catchy. He soon found out that the song inadvertently involved a one chord fluctuation or pink noise. What's that? You may ask. Well, to simplify, it's an experience that adds comfort and relief to any person who is exposed to it. It is mostly observed in Japanese healing music, but it can also be a visual experience. This may include shimmering trees, sunlight filtering through leaves, and gentle movement of 
hair and skirts. Wait, skirts. Oh, I see. But other than the science, both the music director and composer wanted to make this song one of the memorable ones of this era. So it was envisioned to be a Dempa song, a type of Japanese song that is intentionally catchy. This was done through the composer adding as many catchy elements as he can in this song. But back to the comforting effect this song has. Strangely, I also feel more focused and relaxed whenever I hear it. I hate to admit it, but I've spent many hours listening to it and overall, it makes me feel better. I'm not the only one though. Waga mentions in the interview that he has received messages from people who actually studied better with this song playing in the background. Which is just insane for what this song is all about. Oh dear. But that's pretty much me discussing and breaking down this fantastic song. Remember, we're only focusing on the song itself, not on the anime which seems to be losing its appeal. If you want to learn more about how the song was made, I highly recommend checking out the description below for a link to the interview. It's a fascinating story of intentional brainwash, surpassing expectations, and instant virality. And if you enjoyed me breaking down this song, then I invite you to check out my other breakdowns of mainly Kesuguban songs that are either to the left or right of me. Click any one of them. Okay, off I go. See you there!